mentor who was a really fantastic role model, someone who understood children very well and understood families and was able to talk to them in a, a really helpful and meaningful way. And then as I got more into thinking about the position of being a clinical geneticist, I began to enjoy the fact that it wasn't just uh, seeing a child, but it was really involvement with an entire family, and sometimes with an entire extended family. As I got uh, even further into it, I realized what really a privilege it was for me to be given an entree into a family's most difficult, uh, most private, and most intimate times, and that kind of privilege is something that I don't think uh, everyone who is in pediatric medicine or any kind of medicine uh, always gets to partake of. I'm able to actually reassure a family that the child who's suspected of having a genetic disease, a severe genetic disease, or a significant problem, in fact doesn't. Now that's something that happens not daily because I don't see patients every day, but it's something that happens often enough that uh, it keeps me going from week to week. The best part of the job for me is whenever I'm able to finally put a ribbon around a question. And if there's a question that's out there such as how helpful is a certain medication or drug for muscular dystrophy and I'm actually able to then gather the data, find the people who have the disorder, gather the information about the medication or the drug or the treatment maneuver and to uh, hopefully find out that there's something that's been helpful and to be able to write that up, to put that into a manuscript, to send that to a journal and them to say in some way with a digital pat on the back that in fact what I've uh, said is something that's going to be meaningful to a bigger group of people and it's not going to be only meaningful to scientists but actually it might be helpful to families and to doctors who are caring for patients in the everyday world. look into public health aspects of genetics. So a big portion of my day, half or more, is involved in trying to make sure that my grant uh, enterprise is moving forward. My typical patient population is restricted to people who are 18 years and younger. And I know pretty well what my most common referral reasons are. And the most common reason is because someone has a developmental disability of unknown cause. And the second most common is they have a group of birth defects sometimes with a developmental disability and no one knows uh, what that uh, particular disorder is. And then there's other issues of growth and development that uh, show up. And in my practice, and I think in most pediatricians' practices, the age range is, is loaded toward early in life. So newborns and two-year-olds and younger probably make up easily half of the patient population. I'm very excited about where genetics and genomics is going for a variety of reasons. It's primarily because I like to ask questions and I like to try to find answers. I'm not pretending that I'm going to have all the answers, but I think that the answers to so many things are coming at a really rapid pace. So, for example, when I began uh, my career in genetics, seeing patients 20-ish years ago, uh, there were not a lot of clinical tests for me to order. I was doing a lot of clinical diagnosis, and I was probably mostly correct when I said patients had disorder A, B, or C, but now I actually have a test that I can use. I can really tell people not to just rely on the force of my personality and charisma, but actually I can say, here's the basic answer to why that disease is present. And I believe that having that basic answer is the beginning of having some new things to do for patients that would be actual treatments because we know what the very building block issue is with those uh, children and those families and maybe now we can set about uh, creating something new for them, creating treatments that are going to be more effective than what we've been able to offer before. Genetics is not confined to the Genome Research Institute the same way genetics is not confined to my clinic. 
people in neurology, people in cardiology, people in endocrinology are all looking at basic genetic mechanisms for disease and many of the treatments that are being put forth are dealing with the basic genetic mechanisms of disease. So I think that's going to continue to be the case across all specialties and across all age groups. One of the great things about genetics is that one can become very expert in a particular area of genetics rather quickly and very, very well. There's lots of areas that still haven't been uh, figured out. So a trainee can start in seeing patients and working with a well-trained and knowledgeable geneticist and can publish well and become uh, a person who's quite expert in a disease uh, in a really rapid amount of time in ways that I think would be very difficult in other, in other uh, areas of, of specialty in medicine. There's a tremendous amount of diversity in genetics that you can do anything from being a basic researcher to a public health researcher, all the way from the smallest molecule to the largest population. So you have a huge menu to pick from in your research career. You have an opportunity to teach people about uh, important diseases and to be an academician if you want to or to be a person who teaches in a very small arena, a very important one, educating families and educating the doctors that take care of families about a, a very diverse and incredibly interesting and important group of uh, medical disorders. Look, one of my first say half dozen patients that I ever saw. Turned out to have a very severe genetic disease, uh, one called uh, Hurler syndrome, and the little girl subsequently uh, died of that particular disease. But to be able to tell the family that that's what was going on was helpful to me because they'd been spending a good bit of time searching for what the diagnosis was. So I was able to help them understand what it was, and while I couldn't make a change or a difference for that family and that child's outcome, I was able to be with them during that time and again to really be let into that um, into that privileged space that I don't think that many people are able to experience and one of the things now again in retrospect that's even more interesting is that I left that institution after seeing that little girl and 16 or 17 years later I got a call from a genetic counselor that said the family wants to have another child and they uh, have been waiting this long because of the pain associated with the death of their first child and could I help them to find a resource for them to have a prenatal diagnosis for the next pregnancy and uh, was able to help them out and uh, as you might imagine the thing that did happen was uh, very positive they have a great outcome they have a healthy uh, baby now but it was that kind of longitudinal um, interaction and that kind of cycling between you know pain and joy that uh, is really part of everybody's life in some ways but I got to be part of that with this incredible family. 